Hello everybody, annyeonghaseyo. Thank you so much for tuning into another video. Today I will be going over what happens when you leave orientation. So you finally made it to the orientation. Everything has been going well so far, I hope. And now it's time for you to pack your bags and finally move to your apartment. Um, so I think on the last day of your orientation, you get up quite early because you have to leave a certain time like most of us were out by i think i was out by 9 a.m and you get your bags and everything and then you have to go to uh your waiting area and your waiting area with your bags you will get onto a bus that is going to your town or your city uh, by this point you should already know which city you are going to how many schools because you've already signed your contract and everything you have your contracts with you and you have a sealed medical record with you and now you are on the bus so for me i, I came to guangyang city so my journey was about three three and a half hours to the immigration office so the bus will take you to the immigration immigration office in your city uh for guangyang uh we have an immigration in guangyang guangyang Shi. so that's where um we were driven to uh, once you get off the bus so you get off the bus immediately and then, then you have to like wait i don't know if it was the same for other people but we got our bus and then we like had to wait um yeah, we had to like wait in this area for our co-teachers to come and pick us up because we didn't go into the immigration office. We had to like wait outside somewhere and then um, with our bags, got our bags and everything, got off the bus. And then our co-teachers had to come pick us up. Like I waited maybe like not even 10 minutes and my, my co-teachers was very organized. Like she had all her ducks in her bowl. So yeah, she, she picked me up like 10 minutes after, helped me um, carry my bags into the car. And then our first stop was to the immigration office. So we drove about 20 minutes, got to the immigration office and at the immigration office, they needed the following for me. Like she had documentation that she needs, needed to present. I think like your resident, your proof of residency. And she actually filled out my application for my ARC beforehand. But I remember in orient, in during orientation, we, we also did that uh, with the coordinator, Chris. He sent us the ARC application. We had to send it back to him and then fill it out. And then, um, I think your coach just printed and um, they bring that with them on the day that they pick you up. So at least that's how it worked for me. So she had those two documentations and then I needed my passport. I think I needed my passport, a my medical record sealed. I needed a passport photo and then I needed the processing fee, which was 30,000 won. So you'll need that in cash as well. So yeah, in total, you'll need about 33,000 uh, won, <laughs> which is about 486 Rand. Um, if I'm not mistaken, so um, yeah, your your passport photo also needs to be a certain size. I will leave that somewhere for you, and it needs to be in color, and it needs to have a clear background. So um, if you have one, just bring one along with you, a passport size photo, or they have like photo booths over there that you can um, take photos. But I don't know how much it costs. I just I don't know. I just want to be in and out as quick as possible. So I handed her all my things, and then she handed the immigration officer all of the documentation, and that's when you opened the medical record and check to see if everything was fine and you sign something i think you you sign a few things and then you also have to pay another three thousand one as like a, a, um, a postal i'm gonna say it's a postal fee because just so that they can send you your art to your school i had mine delivered to my school um, i think you can also send it to your apartment i'm not sure but i think a lot of people got it from from their schools so um yeah so the three thousand was to send your art to your school let me just make sure that i've mentioned everything about actually getting to immigration office yes so that's immigration so once you got at, at the immigration office my next step was to go to my school so because it was we finished at immigration office like just after 12 my school lunch runs from 12 to 2 so my coach my co-teacher wanted me to meet my principal um and the vice principal so we went to school to get some lunch i figured i think she figured i also might be hungry at this point so we went to the school we went to go get some lunch and then we went to the principal's office but the principal wasn't in that day um so we went to the vice principal and i met the vice principal all i said was my name and um and from there we went to my apartment so luckily i live like five minutes from my apartment so we we got rid of all of my bags and then we went to uh, set up an appointment for my vac uh, my vaccine to get vaccinated so we went to the gym to get a vaccination appointment and then from um the vaccination point we went to the bank okay now the bank took uh, quite some time like i think i was at the bank for maybe 30 minutes to one hour um, because i had to sign a lot of things like opening up a bank account is not quick but i did want to mention some important things when you do go to the bank 
Okay, so most people that are teachers, um, Epic teachers, are, have an NH bank account. Like, I'm pretty sure like 90% of us have NH bank accounts. Um, so you will most most people will probably have an NH account, and this is how it works with NH account. You get to the bank, and your code teacher will do all of the talking and explaining and. Um, all you have to do is sign a lot of documentation, like your initials and everything. But when you get there, ask your code teacher for the following. Okay, one, ask for tap to pay. Okay, so that is just when you are um, going on buses, subways, uh, any like kind of transportation that you can use your bank card to pay for it instead of getting another um, T money card. Like you can get a T money card, and but the problem with that is I kind of have to load it every time. Remember how much money you have in your T money card, and that's just like another card that you have to ca carry around, which for me is very unnecessary. So I just um. Like I insisted that I uh, that she asks for the tap to pay, so I can just pay for my um, transportation costs uh, with my card. And uh, the bank only like takes uh, all of it, like it accumulates, and then it takes off like one lump, like one amount at like certain times. Like I know, like it's on the tenth, and then on the twentieth, like that. So periodically, not every time you swipe it, um, but yeah. So it'll take off at certain times. So it's, um, if they can make sure that you can use your card on international purchases, I did ask this, but um, it didn't. Like, I still have to go back to the bank to have this fixed. So currently, I can't use any international sites to swipe my card on any international sites, there, which is kind of a headache. So I have to use my South African bank account to send or to buy stuff. Like if you are interested in buying from like Sheen or Fashion Nova or those sites, um, or I'm pretty sure like even if I have to buy a flight ticket, I'm gonna have to use my South African account, account because my international purchases have not been set up with my account. Um, so you're yeah, asked that they that you can use your card for international purchases. And then another thing, the last thing you have to ask for a remittance account. That just make uh, that just makes sending money back home for you so much easier if you have a remittance account. So please, while you are there, ask if they can set that up for you. And you'll need I think you'll need your routing number, all your bank details, an address, phone number. Yeah, so I think like a routing number, a SWIFT code, your bank SWIFT code, and I can't really remember what else. You can just um, look what is required from your bank or just, just, just bring all of that information. And then, yeah, also ask for um, internet banking, so or mobile banking, so you can um, use your mobile app to uh, access your account whenever necessary. So yeah, I think that's all when it's, that's about it in regards to setting up a bank account. Now with this, once you like with setting up a bank account you also need a korean phone or like a korean phone number and at that point i didn't have one my co-teacher had to use her phone number in order for me to set up my account so if you don't have a phone a korean phone number you will most your co-teacher will most likely use their phone numbers and then um, you will have a bank account as soon as you get your own korean or uh, sim card then you can just then you would have to go back to the bank and just um change your change update the phone number so that um it's your phone number and not your co-teachers so yeah, that's also something to take into consideration and then for me as soon as my bank account was open that's when my school sent me my settlement allowance and your settlement allowance is just um 300,000 won and that's just to, like settle into your new apartment or into Korea so that's one of the that's also like a very nice perks with teaching with Epic in South Korea um and then when we were done with the bank account I did not go and get a cell phone. I know some people went and set up a cell phone, but I didn't. I was one of those people that had to do that on my own. Just get my own SIM card and get my own phone, which was not that complicated. It's not. It's really not that complicated to do it on your own. Um, <clears throat> choosing which data plan works for you, and then um, I used a lot of pop up uh, like a translation app because I couldn't speak any Korean. Um, but yeah, like it, I managed to do it on my own, so it's not that stressful getting that sorted out. You might go with your co teacher, but for me, I had to do that alone, and then. Next on our list, um, my co-teacher and I went shopping, uh, so I had to already know all of the things that I needed beforehand. Um, so maybe if that's going to be okay, like I said, my co-teacher was very organized, so she like kind of expected me to know, like, okay, what do you think you need? So I have, you have to have like a grocery list or some kind of list already, like things like, like cereal, hand soap, milk, ramen. I had a lot of ramen my first um, um, month. So yeah, I just have like a, a grocery list already in the back of my mind. I needed bidding, I needed all those stuff. So she took me shopping. And I would say, ask your teacher if you can go to Daiso or uh, if you guys have a modern house in your cities. Modern house is like a nicer version of um, Daiso. It's still affordable, but it's like better quality than um, Daiso. So I bought my bidding and my um, cutlery 
not on modern house which I, which I thought was really nice because Daiso, I, I, Daiso is great but the quality is, is, is not that great and I, I don't know if you can find feeding in Daiso at my local Daiso you can't find feeding but I'm sure in like bigger cities you might be able to um, so once we were done shopping she showed me how to once we were done shopping we came back to my apartment and that's when she showed me how to get to school she actually um, printed out a map where the school was and how i can walk fortunately for me my school is a two minute walk from where i live literally i'm so fortunate um so i could walk there relatively quickly and easily uh, other people i think of on the first day of actually going to school your co-teachers actually pick you up um, some people weren't that lucky they had to figure out busing on their own so that was so that's something that you can keep in mind um also when we got to my apartment i had i had a pen and a notepad ready so i wrote down all the codes because there wasn't information overload at that point it told me so many things so i had to write down all the codes all of the passwords and um how to water up the washing machine stuff like that like remembering to put your gas on and off like little things that i know that okay it's like i won't forget but let me write this down anyway so i had a notepad or like sticky notes and a pen handy so i could just write down everything um, so I would suggest you do that too, like just write down everything, all the important things uh, on the sticky note and just paste it somewhere where you can see it. And then like after a few days it will just it will automatically remember. So once we got back to my apartment, she showed me how everything works, she showed me where everything is. And then I had to manually go and check um, if everything that was in my contract was in my apartment. So yeah, make sure you actually do that. And then I also took pictures of what the apartment looked like before I unpacked anything. Uh, so if you had any marks or like scratches or like... Um, yeah, anything that it, I just took pictures of everything, made sure that it had the date so I wasn't that I so that I'm not responsible by the time I leave for anything. So I got to my apartment, that was it. Uh, that was on a Wednesday. So all of this took place on August 26th, it was a Wednesday. The next day, Thursday and Friday, Thursday was my first official day at the school. My school starts from 9 to 5, so I had to be there about 10 minutes beforehand. So I arrived at my school at 10 to 9. And on the first day, I didn't do anything, I just desk warmed for two days. Um, I was assigned to my office or my cubicle where I'd be working and a few more introductions. Uh, I walked around the school uh, just to familiarize myself with like, where I'd be teaching. And um, yeah, so no teaching for me for the first two days. For the first two days, My first day of teaching was on Monday. And for my first day of teaching, all I did was a, a little about me presentation. So just a presentation um, about South Africa and about myself and then I had like a little game two truths and one lie which made it fun for the students to try and guess um, things that are true or not true about me so yeah have like a little presentation on hand that you can use some people might start teaching on day one I know a few high school teachers not even um, in a few um, even of the other phases like elementary and, and middle school they taught on their very first day so have your about me presentations ready um, just in case you might need to teach on your first day um, and yeah I had to do that presentation 16 times because I teach first grade and second grade and first grade has eight classes second grade has eight classes so it was many times by yeah so uh, just being prepared for doing your about me a lot of times so put some interesting things make it interesting enough that you can actually enjoy speaking about it for that many times and then yeah the rest was that was it for my first day of teaching and then for my first day of coming into my town yeah, so that's it for me today. I uh, tried to keep it as short as possible and as informative as possible. And if so, if you have any questions about what I said, um, anything you want to know, just leave a comment or you can message me on Instagram, Marvel Bayoto. And good luck for your first days. Like, if you do make it, um, please let me know how your first days went. Um, I hope that it eases some nerves that um, you look forward to leaving orientation and getting to your apartment. And yeah, good luck everybody. See you next time.